Good afternoon, everybody. This is Chrissy from Solstice ATR and Vulcan Capital Research. With the help of Axel Capital, I will be covering the coming week for the overall market, starting first by taking a look at the President Trump. One, he was tested positive for the COVID-19. Would this set the market back in a bear tone, or does it continue higher, or this is just a small glitch on the map? So we got to cover the economy. We have the election. How far is the virus and how easily can be treated? And President Trump and our first lady tested positive. God bless them. And fast recovery. Um, second thing, I will be covering some of the futures. The S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, Russell, and gold. The ES, as well as the Dow and the RTY. This is the E-mini contracts. Metals, gold or GC or GLD, um, oil CL, which is the um, uh, oil itself, the futures, or you can trade USO, the dollar, the DXY. Some of the ETFs will be JNK, TLT is the bond, IVG is the overall, QQQ is the NASDAQ 100, SPY is the SPX or the SAES mini micro, XVG is the value global, um, USO is the oil, the VXX is the fear gauge, or the VIX. And some of the stocks such as Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Tesla, and ETC. Remember, this is for education use only. We are not a broker-dealer. Past performance does not indicate future results. Use at your own risk, and at the same time, try not to copy the data or mimic it and come back and say why. Um, you can check my handle on uh, Twitter as Chrissy Farah or on Discord at ZOU, ZOU, pound 9345. Here I'm covering the four instruments combined. Last week we had an inverted hammer, and this week we had an inverted hammer with coming back on Friday and pushing higher. So the most important thing to do is to trade what's in front of us on the charts, not what we think. And I will show you something on the five-day range. And I want to do this together with you guys. Um, we'll take the 20-day, 78-minute, or the four-hour. It doesn't matter. When you take the, we were up in a linear regression channel. We eventually broke down. We consolidated in the last week or so. We consolidated the week before. Then we fell down. We pushed up. And this is the last five days, which is day one, day two, day three, day four, and day five. If I combine this, we are in the prior distribution of the week before. The week before, we had a lower distribution. And I can connect this line here with this one to see if we are going to break up or break down in an up channel or down channel and continue lower. So we connect this dot here, which is the highest point, to this one here. This will give us an idea if we are in the linear. We already broke out of this one, which is no longer valid, but I'll leave it there. You don't have to, so we can take that cone out of the way, remove drawing. So if I connect the nearest point, which is this one here, with the nearest one here, as you can see, um, where is it? Uh, more or less, it's this one here. That should be fine. You can see we are in a linear regression channel down channel. We are in a symmetrical triangle from the higher one to the lower one, which is the prior down up channel that we had on the charts. As long as we are still heading and we can clear this area, we can look for the upside. We are in that channel. We got a cone that we broke out of, and we have an up channel here as well that's a sharper one. So what I'd like to do is take those last five days and get the Fibonacci's on them. You grab the Fib. We connect the nearest low. Was it? If you see this one, this was the either the low here or my, I believe this one to the nearest high here. You connect it that way so you can see the extensions to the downside or the extensions to the upside. If things do change, and what we do, we go out five days back when you go edit property and you go to Fibonacci. And since it is 10-1, I'll just move it back three more days and we can get to the Sunday range that we started from the week before continuation either to the upside or downside. That's how you use a FIB. Let's go now, take a look at the RTY. T 
TPY looks a lot much better than the S&P 500, and I'll show you which day. I'll use the daily on these ones, but I won't anchor the FIB on this stuff so you guys can learn from it. Um, let's go back a little bit more. As we can see, this was the down, down move in uh, February, March. We recuperated, we created around the top, and eventually we fell back down. We are in a down channel inside of a cone if this thing gonna go higher i'll just move back up here we filled one of the gaps we still have a couple more down there this is already filled if i take a look at the last five days actually the russell the small cap has recuperated quite a bit in order to continue it has to clear the 167 i mean the 1570 area and the 1595 so in the last five days if i connect this nearest high here to this nearest low here on on sunday or Monday morning trading hours, and we extend it to the top. As you can see, we can have the extensions to the 61.8 and continue and higher. If we go back down, you look for the 61 the extension of the 100%, and we are inside that symmetrical triangle trying to break up. If things do work out and President Trump looks great, everything will move in the right direction. So let's take a look at now the NASDAQ and Q. And I'll just cover this area as well. We are, we're in the down channel, so we can get rid of this one right here since we ran out of there. We broke it away, removed the drawing. So we can connect the last five days range as well in the FEBS. But what I'm going to do, you grab the nearest high to the nearest low. The five days, one, two, three, four, and that's the fifth day. As you can see from this FEB, we can either continue to the 161, or the vice versa to the other side. So I'm not going to anchor him. I want you to do the homework yourself. We can grab the channel right here. Connect this point here, the nearest high, to the nearest low. And as you can see, I'm going to grab that one right here so it looks more cleaner. We are in a channel to the upside. As long as we can reverse hold the 18 SMA, we do not fall in Monday's lower range then we fall lower, then we get the support, and eventually the backside of the channel. As long as I am concerned, we are in a cone. If NASDAQ things do turn around, I'd like to see, you know, the upper distribution on the NASDAQ 100. So let's take right now, this is basically taking the nearest high to the nearest low. As you can see on the daily, this is our support. We're a little bit below the 38.2 FIB, that's F5, F F3, F5 is 50, F6 is 61.8. You do have the 78.2 here, and that's the resistance 100% to the retracement on the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at now the YM. You can see we have similar situation. As you can see, I had drawn these two cones. The machine grabbed them. This is no longer valid. So I'm going to remove that drawing. We're going to connect the nearest high to the nearest low. And at the same time, the machine did the same thing. And the, if you, as you, you can see here, that we are above the 38.2, a little bit shy away from the uh, 50 Feb and the 61.8. In order to continue, we need to see that there is a recovery. We have, you remember, the elections. President Trump is getting re, uh uh, going in the hospital, getting recovery was the first lady and his son. So let's see what happened. And number three, we got to look at the stimulus package if it's going to be given out to the people out there. So this five-day range was a little bit better. This is a nice reversal hammer back inside the Thursday's range from the tweet at 1 a.m. in the morning. So trade what you see. Let's take a look at the ES. And the ES, I'll do a little bit more work on it so you guys can see it. And the ES, you know, this is the last five-day range. We went back in the prior week, the week before we were a little bit weaker. We had this down channel. We can connect this point here to the nearest high in uh, that happened uh, in September 7th, uh, not on the 3rd, before we had the drop. 
we are in a linear regression. We have we have trying to enter back the prior linear regression that we fell down from on the daily. We are in a five day uh, basically range from the prior week before. Let's see if we can continue back in. This was the prior week. We fell down, came back up. And this is like two weeks ago. If this creates a head and shoulder, you can see this pattern. That's the shoulder. That's the head of it. Do we create a shoulder to continue higher? And that's part of the shoulder on the right side. Let's go to the four hour chart. Have this Sunday here, as you can see. And this was basically Friday. This is the Sunday range all the way to here. As you can see, this is the 10 o'clock. Uh, um, what was it? This is on 9. Okay, this is what date? Okay, uh, this is 9 2. This is 14. So I can take this point here. Oops, we got to go get the Fibonacci. My fault. We can connect the, this high to this low here so we can see where we're at. And on Thursday, as you can see, we never touched um, the Wednesday range in the overnight. We came back on that Tuesday, Wednesday range. We looked up. We continued. Then on Friday, due, due to the tweet on the, over the night at 1 a.m. in the morning of President Trump's you know, contracting COVID-19, we fell down. We never tapped into this area or the gap from Friday, Monday range, I mean, from Friday to Sunday range or Monday, as long as we are in the upper distribution of that, we can continue higher. If we fall back, then we continue lower. So we're going to trade what we see. Let's take a look at GC. And let's go to the daily. I'm going to show you in GC that most people are not looking at. And I'm going to zoom down one time. As you can see, we are in a down channel. We have recovered it quite a bit. We're going to keep an eye on the gold. It can connect this point here to this. I mean, to this point here. I'm sorry. We need to get the the channel to make sure we are connected correctly. We grab this point here to this point here. And you can see that one is no longer valid. We can get rid of that one. Remove drawing. And we are in an up channel. We are in an open tone unless I grab this point here. We can grab it to here, which makes it more open cone. But if I grab this point here, we're more in a linear regression channel in consolidation, trying to enter the prior three week range here. If, we, if the dollar gets weaker, this continues higher, and our market will continue higher even after this recovery. We filled a partial gap here. We were looking for partially here. Remember, I said the 1788 I was looking for. Uh, 1860, we got to the 1851, recovered in the last five days. Range moved back up. Let's take a look at oil, then I'll come back to the dollar, slash, CL. Or you can use in the last week or so oil has fallen back down as you can see we were trying to recover couldn't clear the 4150 we looked up into it then eventually we consolidated in the last four days oil have been weak my concern that we have the 36 dollar range here which is the prior 50% Fib on the daily chart. If we lose the 116 and that support here, there won't be any support until we get to this consolidation here from the prior move into the market. My, my thing is this, if this is a Kona, we fall in this middle of this range and you turn back up and create like a W shape, I would like to see that to continue higher in oil, but so, so far, oil doesn't look a nice pattern. It looks it can continue all the way down to this area here. 
unless you know things do change let's take a look at the dollar dollar sign dxy um I still have the fib on it from last week we can see um on the daily chart we fell down we recuperated I'm going to take these fibs out and we fell 50 percent of the move back up remove drawing let's just zoom in as you can see we were climbing higher we recuperated last week and broke out of this area to continue higher and unfortunately we fell back down half the move back from last week's move this is one day two day three day four day five day we were consolidating and eventually we fell down keep an eye on the aussie dollar japanese dollar the british pound the european dollar the swiss franc the canadian dollar that will give you an idea in relationship to what the dollar is doing and what the market is doing with gold or you can look at the bond market the zn or the zb i'll put the zn up it's uh, the 20 year notes Remember the yield strips from last week. I haven't anchored anything since you know I'm not trying to be you know biased to either side. So you have to watch the yield. If people think that there is more opportunity in the bond market, things are going to turn south, then this will you know recuperate and interest rates will eventually you know to stay down and bond prices will go back up. We're still in the range in the last three weeks, nothing to see there. So Let's just uh, take a look at the ES one more time or the SPX by itself. The SPX from the week before. What I want to do is go over some of the instruments here. As you can see, we consolidated in the prior uh, two weeks ago. This was the week before when we fell, then came back on the tweet and stuff, recovered quite a bit. Do we create the head and shoulder to continue higher or not? So let's take a look at the market. I'm going to go to here. And I'm going to go to my desktop. Okay, markets. Go here. Open here. I need to open this. Open this. Where is it? October. Okay, this is October 3rd. Okay. This is the one we had priorly opened. So we're going to go over this area. Remember, I covered the economy. We're going to cover the the election, the virus, and the president recovery by covering all these instruments. We got a couple more to do, but I'll do the VIX at the end and the ES. So this is one thing I want you to remember. As long as on the long term we're looking at an outlook as an active trader is totally different than being a long term investor. You have to be open minded that on the short term things can go south from you know six weeks two months, three months, six months. That's the worst scenario from 1975, the 1983, then 2009, the real estate bubble. As we can see, the one year return up to four years or five years, we can have it as low as 21% uh, and as high as 93. And the medium range of those, if I could, uh, average amount was 73%. And this is being realistic, taking a look at historical facts and understanding what can major indices do over time, comparing it to the S&P 500. Let's take a look at the second one. That's the small cap compared to the S&P 500. Uh, that's basically looking at the supply and demand momentum indices from 2003 and 2009. Remember, small caps were not introduced till later on, you know, about 10, 15 years ago. Most of them were mid cap, large cap, tech sector and consumer staples and stuff like that. As you can see from 2009, we had a 95 percent rate of return in 2003, 2001. Remember when the Twin Towers got hurt in the tech bubble? We had a four-year rate of return and the minimum on a five was 16 percent so we have a yield average of 56 percent this is taking a look at the tlt and the jnk overall etf funds compared to the s p 500 dated from 2009 2012 how far we can go on the short term down in six months how much we can recuperate and taking a look at a five-year outlook between 110 and 69 or four year between 81 and 47 so we do have an average yield of 90 percent return so here's another one um, this is the board uh, geometric indexes from 1980 this allows you 
uh, to get a better feel of the indices out there. As you can see from 1983 till 2009, we have an average of 83%. And this is uh, comparing the crude oil or USO or an ETF fund uh, uh, in relationship to the S&P from uh, 20, uh, 1990 till 2009, what has been the average rate of return over the five years on a short period of time, six months or three months or even two months, what the outcome can be to the long term. Let's just go back here to the beginning. You can freeze the video. And just go over comparing, you know, gold, silver, the dollar, the XVG, that's the one we had, the VIX, which I didn't do, or the VXX, that's the fear gauge, or the USO is the oil, and such as, you know, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Tesla. So let's take a look at the VIX before I can look at Apple or the other stuff. You can use VXX. We'll go to the VXX. And I'm going to move that fib out of the way because that was the week before. I usually anchor my uh, fibs once a week from Monday, from basically from Sunday to Friday of each week, the prior week, to see if there is any momentum in the moves up or down. This was because of the fear gauge, you know, the VIX was coming down, it recuperated, and we had that tweet of Donald Trump contracting and the VIX spiked up and came back down. This is just an instrument that people do buy when things are going south and they want to, you know, make sure to protect their portfolios. They use the VXX. Um, let's take a look at uh, Apple. You can see it's in the range bound. It fell, came back up and fell down in the last five day range. Does it create a shoulder? Or do we lose that channel to continue higher or not? That's Apple. Take a look at Amazon. Oops. Amazon is in a similar situation. Amazon, a little bit weaker, came back down compared in the last five day range. This is the gap on Friday from the week before. Let's take a look at NFLX. Oops. Why is it going to NFLX? And that Netflix was very nicely going up, continuation, and eventually on Friday fell down to that noise in the market. So let's see what Netflix does. Does it create a cup and handle to continue higher or not? Let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla is in a similar situation, moved up, came back down, holding the 38% fib. Remember, support and resistance usually. The 38 access support, if not if not the 50, usually the 61A, and you have the 50 SMA here. So we're going to trade what we see, not what we think. The most important thing that I'd like to keep open-minded to, uh, to what the market out there and what's going on. And don't be biased to one side being bearish or bullish. You can always be neutral, open mind. To the direction and the move that's given to you on the technicals so you have basically the breath the tick of the market the bank sectors the gold sector the dollar will keep you in line when you're trading part of the s p the nasdaq or the small cap or even the dow so be safe look forward to seeing you next week either at solstice or on discord over